Uh, yeah, yeah, chain reaction. Okay, this is not the best uh, picture, which is why it's good that I'm going to do the simulation. Uh, what chain reaction describes is uh, you have a, a first thing that's being excited through uh, injection of a neutron and that produces additional neutrons that can cause more of these um, fission reactions. But sorry, this picture doesn't quite do the justice at this idea. So let me go to the FET simulation, which will help us explore this idea of chain reaction in the context of uh, fission reaction. That's uh, much more exciting than <laughs> what the diagram shows. Let's see. Um, I think it might be called the fission, yeah, nuclear fission. Um, ah. They haven't updated this yet. So this is a kind of a quick schematic description of fission. Um, you have a fissile uh, isotope and by fissile, well, sorry, I'm using fissile a little bit loose. We, we have an isotope which can, be, which can be caused to undergo fission. So this is in a state that's a metastable state. And if you are just waiting for this to de spontaneously decay on its own, it'll take a long time. Uranium-235 has like uh, millions of years of half-life. So, but you can speed up this reaction by giving it a little bit of energy. And the form in which you give it a little bit of energy is by, by striking it with a neutron. So if I fire a neutron at it, that causes this to go to this higher energy level, which then can decay into those uh, split daughter nuclei much more quickly. So that's uh, the description of how in the microscopic, a single nucleus model, how fission happens. So it um, requires a presence of a isotope with the right nuclear properties. And you need a second ingredient, which is the neutron that you um, strike uh, with that isotope. It. In chain reaction, so what you have is a combination of those two ingredients in a very particular combination. So, you know, when you have a single isotope, you get a reaction and you're done. Okay, that's a reaction, <laughs> it's not a chain reaction. Now, in most uh, uh, natural state, the atomic nuclei are, don't uh, sit by themselves. It's around many other atomic nuclei. Now, um, so, well, let's uh, look at that interaction if you have more than one atomic nuclei nearby. Then this is still kind of what you see. It's not all that interesting. And um, for, we to, for us to get additional reactions, we would, uh, we would have to keep putting in neutrons. So that, um, that doesn't seem very, uh, you know, it, it feels like it takes a lot of effort. It doesn't feel like a something that where you trigger something and uh, something big happens. What happened was something small and it didn't continue happening. So that's not quite chain reaction. For us to get chain reaction, what we need is not just uh, a few um, atoms. I think it, right now the way these are arranged, it's more probably more likely to get a few more reactions, okay. That was a little bit more interesting than before. For us to get a um, chain reaction that's uh, more similar to actual nuclear explosion, nuclear fission bomb, A-bomb explosion, is what happens when you have enough of these um, fissile isotopes in a confined space, much more densely packed together. So in an arrangement to something like this, we'll get a fission reaction. Let me uh, pause the simulation so that I can, I'll have time to talk. So I fire it. And so here's a neutron coming up and it's going to strike its first uranium, uranium-235 isotope. Now, watch what happens. As it's split, it split off, spits off of multiple neutrons, two or three neutrons. And now these are arranged in such a way that the neutrons that come out, they have a pretty good chance of hitting another uranium-235 nucleus. Or in other words, this collection of uranium-235 has critical mass. So 
um, these neutrons that are coming out, they are each going to hit another uranium-235 and cause more, more neutrons to come out and more neutrons to come out and so on. And as that happens, because now there's basically a flood of neutrons, and this is what chain reaction describes. It starts out with one small trigger, and each step in the reaction, it produces more of what's needed to keep the reaction going. And the arrangement you need to keep the chain reaction going is for a critical mass of fissile nuclei to be collected together in the same place. And you know, there's a, a lot of kind of social analogies that you can draw. And sometimes you talk about critical mass of activists and whatnot. Um, <laughs> but well, this is the physical description of when you have a critical mass of something that can create a nuclear bomb. Um, now in nature, you don't see nuclear bombs just forming spontaneously. Even though uh, normally when you find atomic nuclei, you will uh, see them collected in, um, you know, it, it, they're, they're not um, existing a single atom. They, they exist in a solid, packed with many other nuclei. So why, why don't we have nuclear bombs going off all the time? The reason for that is, has to do with the purity of, purity that's not the quite, um, well, we do talk about refining. Um, it has to do with the isotope composition of uranium. The natural isotope composition of uranium is more like for every one uranium 235, I can't get one. For every one uranium 235, there's uh, 100 uranium 238. And uranium 235 and uranium 238 uh, have different properties with this key difference. With uranium-238, when you strike it with a, a neutron, it becomes uranium-239. And uh, uranium-239 does not undergo fission. It will later on undergo beta decay to become plutonium-239, but um, it doesn't undergo fission. So uranium-238 is a, it's a neutron absorber. It uh, Neutron strikes it, and it's gone. So, so when you have um, so when you have um, an arrangement with a bunch of uranium two thirty five, um, so you know this is the setup that produced that chain reaction and nuclear explosion. You can uh, mess up this arrangement by introducing uranium two thirty eight. Let me just pull equal number of uranium two thirty eight. Is uh, all right. I'm sorry, I guess there's a limit to how many atomic nuclei I can put here. Something like this. Okay, let me first to make sure that it's still an arrangement that will produce a chain reaction and what kind of looks like an explosion, you know. 70 uranium-235, that's enough. All right. So now let me just say it's a half and half, uranium-235 and uranium-238. Um, this is actually more uh, more highly enri oh, enrichment, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> the, the process is called enrichment. It's more highly enriched than naturally occurring uranium because it's 50% uranium-235. And watch what happens. Oh, wait. Oh. Yeah, uh, so, you know, um, the neutron strikes on uranium-235 and there's one kind of explosion and then there's a, oh wait, okay, I guess. Um, <laughs> so um, I guess, uh, yeah, 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 but let me just, uh, okay, so here, now the next one I fire is going to hit uranium-235, but you will see it's impact limited because so many of those neutrons are being absorbed by uranium-238. So, oh, well, it's, it's, I guess, right on the border. So you still have uranium-235 that wasn't reached. Um, so, so that was a 50%. Let me go down a little bit more. Uh, let's say about 30%. That's, uh, that's about 30%. And let me just double check that um, if in the absence of uranium-238, there, that's still enough uranium-235 to cause a chain reaction. They are densely packed enough. There is a critical mass. 
but with the presence of uranium-238, now oh, I have to fire a couple times, it now, uh, <laughs> a couple times, uh, it's now no longer enough. The, the neutrons keep getting absorbed by uranium-238 and uh, you don't have a sustaining chain reaction. What used to be a critical mass of uranium-235 is now, uh, it's not a critical mass anymore. So when we describe critical mass, it's a combination of uh, what, how highly enriched the sample is and all that. So there's also, you know, kind of social analogy you can draw how sometimes other people can be drags. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that aside, um, this is the reason, I think somewhere I might say something about how um, a nuclear reactor cannot cause the same type of explosion as an atomic bomb can. And the biggest reason for that is the, um, how highly refined the uranium fuel that the nuclear power reactor uses. Uh, um, so we talk about weapons grade uranium. And weapons grade uranium is something like a 99% uranium-235. Um, the reactor grade, the nuclear power reactor grade is, uh, I think it's only a few percent. And um, some of you might remember uh, in the news about Iran or Iran uh, enriching uranium for their research reactors. And research reactors might use uranium enrich it to the level of 40% or something like that. Um, that's used for, well, physics research. Uh, but even at 40% enrichment, it's not high enough to be made into a bomb. To make a nuclear bomb, you need something that said, uh, I don't know the exact percentage, like but 90 plus percent uranium-235. So that's a chain reaction and a description of what can be done to mess up chain reactions. 